Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Fernie, and this is my podcast. And uh, it is December, Thursday, December 27th, uh, 2018. And we are just a few days away from New Year's and going into the, to the next uh, the next year, the, the opportunity for us to start all over again, right? Um, so I hope you guys had a great holiday season. I hope you guys had a good um, Christmas if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah, um, if you celebrate some of the other great holidays. I had an amazing Christmas. I went to see my family down in Houston, where I'm from, and uh, I had a, a great time spend, uh, spending the uh, Christmas Eve with them. Because Hispanics, we Hispanics, we, well, not all Hispanics, but we Hispanics, we usually celebrate it like on Christmas Eve. I don't know. I honestly don't know why. I mean, you know, most people celebrate Christmas on Christmas Day, um, and uh, we usually do Christmas Eve. And I remember when I was a kid we used to go to my grandfather's house and all of my aunts and uncles and cousins used to go over and my step-grandmother would have a huge tree with tons of presents and it was just a good it was a great opportunity for us to just go over and be with with the family so um, it was always a Christmas Eve thing for us Um, and I remember she used to put out the nativity scene um, with the baby Jesus, and she's put those, those little houses that you light up from the inside. Um, and th- those were my my memories growing up. So nowadays, you know, most of our family doesn't even get together in that way anymore, just because ever since my grandpa died, you know, they found reasons to just kind of do their own thing. So people just kind of do their own thing. And I spent my holidays with my my mom and my sister, and then also with my partner's family. So I usually split split my time up with my family, and then I split the other time up with my partner family but it's it's just nice to be able to see them um for the holiday season and so we drove down to houston and that was like a it's well you know if you don't take any breaks and if you i mean if you hold it and you don't take any breaks and you don't eat and do anything or even stop for gas i mean it should take 12 hours but of course you have to stop you have to get gas you have to get something to eat you have to walk around for a bit stretch your legs use the bathroom you know all of that stuff and so that usually adds on about two hours to our trip so it took us about 14 hours down uh, to get down there and then we were there for christmas eve and then we drove back up christmas day which was uh you know the day after christmas eve and so we were only there for like 24 hours if that um but it was totally worth it because you you know i got a chance to see my family so i hope you guys are having a great holiday as well i'm uh, back up in new mexico and uh, we've got a blizzard rolling through and, and actually it seems to be the news that's that's making um headlines right now with with uh, a lot of weird weather happening around the country um and so it's uh it's i know in some places there's a lot of flooding going on and um, actually, let me, let me tell you this story. So this is what the news reported today. It says, two dead from storm that has caused blizzard conditions in Midwest and heavy rain in South. Two people died on Thursday as a result of a severe storm system that caused blizzard conditions in the U.S. Midwest and, ter- and torrential rain and flood threats in the South. All this spells more nightmares for holiday travelers heading into New Year's weekend. Quote, this storm system was always comprised of two threats, one for blizzard conditions and another for severe weather, end quote. CNN meteorologist Gene Norman said, uh, roads in parts of central and northern Minnesota are covered with ice and snow. The Minnesota Department of Transportation urged drivers to wait for conditions to improve if travel isn't necessary. In South Dakota, snow and mixed precipitation will worsen as heavy snow combines with wind. In Nebraska, whiteout conditions and crashes forced the closure of Interstate 80 between Lexington and North Platte. About 24 million people are under flood watches or flash flood watches through early Saturday, Norman said. So weather around the country is just going nuts. Um, I blame, of course, (laughs) I'm going to blame global warming. But, um, you know, I think we this is an El Nino year um, from what I 
from what I've been told. So the weather this year is going to be a little more extreme than usual because we are in a, in a year in, in the cycle year where El Nino is kicking up. So that's probably going to be creating a lot of different systems um, that would normally come into places like like what I'm dealing with right now. So I mean, we we have a blizzard going on right now, and and um, in New Mexico. And um, I, as I'm actually talking to you guys, I'm looking out the window and I'm watching the wind roaring by and the snow just kind of, the flurries just going by. And we've got about three or four inches of snow on the ground already, which is kind of unusual for this much snow in um, this part of New Mexico. Cause we, you know, there, there isn't usually a lot of snow that hits the ground. There is, but it's not as much as it has been. So it's been it's been pretty cool, honestly. Um, and, you know, it's it's weird because, like, I mean, whenever there's something big happening or something like this, you know, even though it's a little scary, um, it's also exciting because it's, 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 it's a change from the norm, right? It's a change from our everyday, you know, circumstances. Earlier, I was uh, – we had to go grocery shopping today. We were actually – you know, we do our grocery shopping, like, every Tuesday. And we plan it out. Um, we, I have an inventory and I, I blame Starbucks for this because, um, you know, when I was at Starbucks, I had, I had to do all of the inventory counts and all of that, um, because I used to have to, you know, I was the store manager. That's what I did. So here at the house, I have everything in an inventory list. So I go through the list every single week to see what we're missing, what we need, what we're low on, and then make the decision to either purchase or to, to wait another week or two. Um, so I go through inventory with my partner every week um, to see what we need to buy from the grocery store. Because I hate going to the grocery store more than once. Like if, like you know, if I if I go once a week, get everything I need, great. But you know, it got to the point at one at one time where I was going like three or four times a week to the grocery store to, to get stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I'm spending so much time at the grocery store. So this inventory list really helped us out, and so now we just go once a week, we get whatever we need, and then I don't have to worry about it for a few uh, for another week or two. So it works pretty well for us. But um, we were doing our inventory list uh, earlier today, and we had to go to the grocery store and kind of stock up on all the stuff that we didn't have because we used most of our food um before we went to houston so when we got back we were like completely empty the cats didn't have any food i mean if anything i'll starve but i will want them i will make sure that my cats especially my mama cat that they have food so that they don't starve um so that to me is a priority it's the most important thing to do so I, um, where we live, our house is kind of like at the bottom of a slope. And so I got in the truck and I'm, you know, trying to back out of the truck and there's snow on the ground from, from the day before, the, from yesterday because it snowed yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday it snowed. So, uh, we had a few inches on the ground and, uh, I backed out of the, I backed out of the garage with the truck and I don't have a four wheel drive truck. I just have like a Nissan Frontier. So I backed out and, you know, back out far enough and my, my, my tires are starting to spin and I'm not going any further. I'm like, okay, I've got to turn. You know, normally I will back all the way out of the driveway and it's a pretty long driveway um, going up the slope. Um, that wasn't going to happen. So I was like, okay, how do I get out of here? Cause I kind of need to go to the store. Um, and so I, I came up with the idea of trying to turn the truck completely around in the space that I had available. Um, and it took a few tries, but I, try, I turned the truck around and then I backed up into the garage garage and then I like floored it I floored it out out of the garage because the garage had enough traction right instead of the snow so I floored it out of the garage onto the uh, the little upward incline and I made it up to the top and I was like yes I made it um, and then I like slid all over the damn road, which was um, kind of crazy. But but you know it is what it is, right? You you, you do what you have to do to feed your cats. So um, yeah, so we went grocery shopping, and it was crazy at the grocery store. Um, I think people were realizing that they were probably going to get snowed in for a few days, um, and I don't think that people here are used to that much snow. And I was talking to my um, my brand. Um, strategist i have a brand strategist her name is christy she's amazing and uh, she's up in denver colorado and she was telling me that they haven't had a lot of snow period and i used to live in denver so i know it snows pretty heavy there um so we're getting a bunch of snow they ain't getting nothing uh so i'm like okay well this is it is what it is but um the, everybody at the store was just going nuts the lines at the checkout counters were long and uh people were just you could you could sense the anxiety and the 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 just like 
oh my gosh, I have to get food before we get snowed in or the possibility of getting snowed in because of this blizzard that was coming this way. Um, I mean, it's a good thing we had a, we had a warning, right? So um, and on every other week, I go to like several different stores. Like every week I go to the same store, which back in Houston was Kroger's. Here it's like Smith's. But um, every other week I go to places like Walmart and um, Trader Joe's because there's always a few things in those places that they don't offer at like some of the other grocery stores. So we went to uh, – we were at the uh, Trader Joe's and it was like crazy. And as, as we were walking into the store, this woman – was walking out of the store and she just tells us she says don't go in there <laughs> she says don't go in there and i heard her my partner didn't hear her the other people walking in didn't hear her but i heard her now, unless she said it in her head and i heard her thoughts but i heard her say don't go in there so we walk in there and i'm just like holy shit like this is insane um and uh i i already myself struggle with crowds and with a lot of hectic energy and and with people are going nuts um ed my partner he's definitely not a people person he just prefers to be very private you know doing his own thing he doesn't really care to be around people around crowds i think you know being where we are we're, we're we're kind of out in the i would say out in the country um it's good for him because you know he doesn't have to be around a lot of people like it was in houston but at one point in the store and we weren't even done with our shopping like we were, we were still halfway through our list he was like i need to get the fuck out of here i need to get the fuck out of here i'm like okay here are the keys go back to the truck i will i will take care of it and i'll, I'll meet you back at the truck so he's like okay how do i get out of here <laughs> Does you get out of here through the front door that's how you get out of here so he took off and he left and he went back to the, the truck and uh, i finished uh, the shopping. So that was fun. <laughs> fun day at the grocery store. So I hope you guys are having better um, better weather. Um, if not, I mean, I hope you enjoy the hectic weather. I know, you know, the few times that I've been down in Houston where we had major hurricanes, um, it's crazy. I mean, I was back, back when Ike, no, was it Ike? Um, back when Rita was coming, you know, when it, that, that was the year that New Orleans got hit really, really bad and all those people died in the hurricane. Uh, Katrina, it was Katrina. And then shortly thereafter, Rita was coming. I think it was Rita. And um, everybody was freaking out over what had happened in New Orleans. And so they evacuated. We, we began to evacuate Houston. And I remember that. I mean, it was just crazy. Everybody evacuating the city. I mean, millions of people. And um, I... I we left with some family members and we went to San Antonio because I had an uncle in San Antonio who had a huge ranch. So we figured we'd go and stay with him. And uh, that's normally like a three and a half hour drive. And it turned into like an eight hour drive. And we were, they, they had to open like both sides of the freeways just so that we could get out. And I remember um, during that time, my cousin telling me, she's like, oh my God, you know, like it's like the day after, it's like, it's like the movies, you know, where people are, 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 uh, what is it? deep impact that movie with the asteroid where people were evacuating and there were like all the free wizard crowd i'm like i know it's it, it, it really is surreal when you're in that kind of situation and you're having to evacuate and it's like something out of a movie um so that's kind of crazy i think you know so if you guys have ever um gone through anything like that or if you were part of the whole um rita evacuation or um if you've had to deal with any kind of weather like that i'd love to hear your story um feel free to like post it in the comment section below or in the facebook post where this is linked to or if you want to post it in anything that you have the option of connecting to like comments and stuff instagram etc just sh- share your story i'd love to hear it so that's pretty much what's been going on um you know i i love the holidays um and i think i think it's uh it's it's a time of year changing stores i'm like totally changing subjects but i mean it's i mean snow makes the holidays right snow makes the christmas holiday for me at least um but now we've got like other things happening um at the same time and i want to tell you a story it's kind of a cute little story uh that happened to us so the past few weeks um, we've been watching shows, you know, Ed and I, we you typically like veg out in front of the couch and we'll watch um, old series. I love watching shows like Living Single. I don't know if you guys remember Living Single with Queen Latifah. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, 90s shows. But we were watching it and, and they were there was an episode where they were eating bagels. And then we watched an episode of Will and Grace 
and then they were eating bagels. And so, and the, you know, both of those shows took place in New York or in like the Bronx or whatever. So, so, um, um, we, so Ed was like, he made a comment. He said, you know, I really want a bagel. I've been craving a really good bagel. I've been craving a really good bagel. And so, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but they're carbs and you know, where I'm on keto, I can't eat it. And there's no point in us buying bagels because you're going to, you know, and not only that, but when you go to the store, you know, it's all just like regular bagels. It's not like there's any like special specialized bagels. I mean, some of the stores have like those special bagels that you can get, or you go to, um, um, what is it, Einstein's bagels? Um, but they're all just like regular bagels that you buy in the bread section. Um, that doesn't, that's not going to do it, right? You really want like a New York style bagel. So he made the comment. He's like, I really am craving. I want a bagel. I want a bagel that they're eating, you know? And he mentioned it. He's like, everybody seems to be eating bagels. And so he made that comment like just a couple of weeks ago when we were watching that show. Um, and it was, a, it was a thought that we both had like for a couple of days. And then we just like, you know, we just got off of it. It was just, we're doing something else. We decided we're not going to buy bagels because, you know, what's the point? We're not going to eat them. And, and you know, he's only going to eat like one. One. Um, so today um, we get back from the grocery store, and I'm, you know, I, I parked the truck in the garage. Ed, Ed's taking out the, the groceries; he's putting them in into the house. And um, I thought, well, let me go get the recycling bin because the recycling bin is up on the hill, and I can't really take the truck up there again, um, back out and get back up there. So I decided I walked up to the hill and went to go get the recycling bin. And as I'm walking back, I noticed that there's this huge major tracks on the on in the snow. And then there's like at one point the tracks stop, and then there's like footprints coming out of like where the vehicle would have stopped. So I'm thinking to myself, that's not my truck because the tire tracks are different. Who who stopped in the middle of our driveway and got out in this spot? Like, did someone come to to you know knock on our door? Did someone come to you know? You always have these thoughts going through your head, like what happened? Um, and so I thought, well, maybe it was a delivery guy. Maybe they they delivered something, or maybe they thought we were going to deliver something, and they, they just didn't come down all the way because of all the snow, and they just stopped halfway, and this is where he got out. So I thought, well, let me go check the front door because that's where they usually leave packages, right? So I go over to the front door. And there's a box there, and I'm like, okay, I know I, I didn't order anything. I'm not waiting for anything. The last time I got a box, I was worried it was like a bomb or something because I hadn't expected any deliveries. And you know, I told Ed when that delivery came, I was like, babe, did you deliver something? He's like, no. I mean, did you buy something? He's like, no. And I said, well, what is it? There's a box out there. He's like, yeah, I know, I saw it out there, and I, I. It's a bomb or something. I'm not going out there to get it. You're going to have to deal with it. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll be the one that gets that, that, that blows up, right? So I bring the box inside, and I slowly start to open the box. Um, and this was the first delivery, right? And it turned out to be these Coca-Cola bottles with my, with our names on them that my friend had sent me for Christmas and didn't didn't tell me so they weren't a it wasn't a bomb so you know so i thought okay maybe somebody else sent us a gift with a second delivery so i went and brought the box inside and i look at the the the, the front of the package and it has this other woman's name and this other woman i know used to live in, in the place that we live in now the the, uh, the house that we're renting this woman used to live here so i remember and i was like well this is the woman that used to live here and it was a big old box and it's new york bagels that's what the delivery was so it's for new york bagels so basically it was like an overnight package for new york bagels um that arrived at our house but it was for her um but it, it came to our house um and so I was like, okay, I don't know where she, I don't really know where she is or where she lives. So, but I knew she still lived in the neighborhood. So I went online and I messaged her and I was like, hey, are you missing bagels? Or <laughs> we got your bagels or whatever. She never responded. So we we have these bagels. Um, but yeah, we've got, we got a delivery of New York bagels from New York. I mean, they got delivered overnight. Um, so it's kind of funny because we were craving bagels, specifically New York style bagels. And then here we get this random box in the mail of New York style, style bagels. And I mean, if that's not a story for like manifestation or, you know, you drawing something to you, I mean, come on. How many people can say I'm craving a freaking New York style bagel and a week later you get a random box in the mail, even if it's by mistake, even if we don't get a chance to eat these bagels, you know, just to get this random box in the mail from of these bagels from new york it's just it's hysterical so um yeah so that's one of the things that's happened recently um for me so that was pretty funny i wanted to share that with you guys um so there's a story that i read um 
I was I think I read it. Yeah, I think it was today. I think it was today. So it's twenty. What is today? Today's twenty. It was it was yesterday. It's a it's a story from yesterday, and I want to read it to you. And it just really warms my heart. And I think it it really brings to fruition the point of the season, like what this is all about, like what the season is all about. Um. So we, um, here's the story. When man finds balloon with girl's Christmas list, he travels to Mexico to deliver. The story was written by um, McKinley Corbley. So uh, here's the story. Despite being separated by an international border, an American man was able to make a Mexican girl's Christmas wish come true after he found it tied to the string of a balloon in the desert. Randy Heiss had been out on a walk with his dog in Patagonia, Arizona, when he saw a deflated red balloon trapped in some shrubs. More peculiarly, um, there was a little note attached to the string. The note, which was written in Spanish, was a Christmas list that was addressed to Santa from a little girl named Deami. Deami, yeah, Deami. Um, the sweet youngster simply said that she wanted some pa- some paints and new clothes for Christmas. Heiss was moved by the letter, not just because of its innocence, but also because he used to send letters to Santa the very same way. So he became dedicated to fulfilling the child's Christmas wish. It really touched my heart to find it, and I said, well, how in the heck am I going to be able to figure out how to make contact with this little girl and make her wishes come true, end quote. Heist told KVOA. He told he took to social media, hoping to find someone who could put him in contact with a family. With Christmas looming ever closer, Heist eventually approached a Mexican radio station for help, and within one hour of them broadcasting his story, he was connected with Dayami's family in Nogales, Sonora. Dayami's family was extremely grateful for the gesture, and Heist and his wife were careful about telling the kids that the gifts were from santa so i love this story because it just it goes to show how sometimes you know for those of us who practice like manifestational law or practice um law of attraction what's loa what some people call it you know it's like one of the things that we practice is you write you write what you want or you you write a list of the things you want to achieve or you would like to manifest and then you kind of have to forget about it after you put enough energy or, or time into it um and it's just it's so sweet because here this little girl is so pure in her desire and her longing for something so simple just some paints and some clothes and she sends this off in a balloon now granted me as a person i was like well, you know why are you polluting why are you why are you you know sending this into the air why are you polluting why are you you know an animal is going to eat that balloon it's going to get sick or whatever you know if you look at the bad stuff right if you, if you try to focus on the negative but Getting back to the story, I mean, this is just a child. All she wants are pants and paints. And so she she writes her stuff on this piece of paper and attaches it to balloon and sends it off into the air, hoping that it's going to reach Santa or that it's going to get, you know, to where she hopes it will get to. How many times has someone done that? How many children have written letters to santa you know hoping that their that their that their letters would be answered um and and how many times does that actually happen so out of all the the out of all the different things that had to take place for him to find this to be able to do that and then for him to get the help of a radio station so that he could find the family so that he could fulfill this little girl's christmas wish i mean i just love this story um and there's more to the story that i read um where you know he and his wife their their son had um their son or their their child had passed away their child had died and so they knew that they would never get a chance to have grandchildren because they they lost their child and so they were doing this kind of in honor of their deceased child and also on behalf of the grandchildren that they would never have so you know despite politics despite the idea of you know people who live in poverty who need help etc but despite all that stuff the purity and the idea behind this story is what really is amazing and it is what is the christmas spirit it, it's you know it's done out of a, a place of charity a place of love a place of giving to others and you know to me christmas shouldn't be the only time that we 
um, that we practice good deeds or that we can, you know, think of others and try to help others. Granted, there are always going to be people out there who could use help. I mean, that's just a given. You know, people people usually end up in really difficult situations or they they end up in difficult spots. And my my thing is, you know, if you can help, if you're in a position where you can help, then you know, then do something about it. Um, if you're in a position where you can't help, then don't guilt yourself. Don't give yourself a hard time over it. Um, and then there are some people where you just don't need to help them. They need to kind of work things out on their own and they need to figure it out because if they got themselves in the situation, then they need to figure out a way to get out of it. But you know, on top aside from that there are people that you you know you can help there are people who you can um give assistance to and that's okay you know if you can do it then so be it um but just do it make sure that it's coming from a place of pure pure loving giveness and not just a place out of a sense of obligation um i'm a huge huge advocate for giving because you want to giving because you choose to and not giving because you feel that you're obligated to do so or because you feel guilty that you know that you didn't help someone that you said no to someone it's okay to say no to people and i'm giving you permission to say no to people so if you ever feel like you're in a position where you don't you can't really give or you choose not to for whatever reason um don't feel guilty you know because you should give from your heart you should give from a place of pure love and intention um you know when i was growing up i grew up always wanting to please people, always wanting to make other people happy. And it took me a long, long time to kind of work that out of my system. And to this day, I still struggle with it from time to time. But, you know, it, it's a lot of energy to try to make everybody happy. Um, and you you can't. You can't make everybody happy. You can't please everybody. So um, it's important to understand why you do what you do and why you want to do the things that you do. And uh, I remember... And this is actually the first time I've ever said anything to anyone about this. Um, but I remember back when I was a teenager, I think it was like maybe 17 or 18, I um, bought like a loaf of bread and uh, some packaged meat, some cheeses, um, and like bags of chips, like a packet of chips, um, you know, with the little individual baggies. And I made like, I think it was like 10 bags of like sandwiches and chips with all the stuff in it. So I, I, made those, packed them up, I put them in my backpack, and then I just went walking in downtown Houston. Um, And that was back in the day when you could walk into downtown Houston, there was stuff to look at, there were stores still there, you know, Um, I think Macy's was still there, I don't know if Macy's is there now, but yeah, so I walked around and I, I just looked for people who seemed like they were homeless or seemed like they could use the food. Um, And I would always approach people, say, how are you doing? And I didn't want to offend anybody. I didn't want anyone to think that, you know, I was assuming that they needed help. But I would just, you know, approach people and say, how are you doing? You know, are you doing okay? You know, have you eaten today? Would could you could, would you like a sandwich bag? Um, and then I would give them a sandwich bag. And I did that. I walked around downtown and I gave away all my bags. Um, just trying to find people to give sandwiches to. So, and that, that's this is the first time I've ever said this to anyone. And I'm not saying this to like, oh, Fernie, you're so great. No, just like, you know, let's get off of me for a second. But it's just like, I did that because I wanted to do something and I didn't want to get credit for it. Meaning that I, I said to myself, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to tell anyone that I did this. And this was back then. This was years and years and years ago. And I'm just using this as an example. I'm using it for you to give me credit. So don't, don't feel like you have to give me credit for this. But it was just me trying to prove to myself that I could give to others out of the, the generosity of my heart, not because I felt pressure or because I felt obligated to do so. And and a lot of times we get lost in the sense of obligation. We get lost in a feeling of I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, or this is what's expected of me. And we get so used to that that we end up giving from an impure place and it really doesn't it, you know it, it really doesn't vibrate and go out into the world the way that it's meant to the way that we should put energy out into the world from a loving place and then people get used to just doing out of obligation out of because of their religious beliefs or because of social um, expectations or whatnot um, or because they care about what other people think about them um, and then they don't do it out of the, the generosity of their heart I was talking to my um, friend who you know she deals with other people 
And she had mentioned to me, other people who have brands and so forth, and she had mentioned to me that um, sometimes people, when they when they are going to promote a like nonprofit, they all promote the same nonprofit because it's a well-recognized world like um brand um nonprofit and so if you're if you're anyone if you want to be connected to anyone who's giving to some sort of uh, organization this is the organization you get to and she's like so if you want to do that we can do that to your site i was like no i don't want to do that why would why the hell would i want to align myself with the nonprofit that everybody else is doing that's that you know that doesn't mean anything to me if i'm going to if I'm going to give, if I'm going to do something nonprofit, I want it to mean something to me. I want it to mean something to be important for me to feel connected to that. So I said, no, I don't want to do that. That's, that's, that's everybody's nonprofit. I don't want to do that. Let's do the SPCA or let's do, you know, animals. I'm like, I, I think I do enough for people. Let's do something for animals because animals, you know, could use the help. So it's one of those things where I want to do that because I want to do that. I don't care if the expectations, well, you should be giving this or you should be giving that. Um, yeah, of course, but make sure that you give out of the purity of your heart. So what I would suggest to you guys and what I would say is this season, you know, if you're going to give, actually whenever you're going to give, whether it's this season or not, make sure that you're doing it out of the purity of your heart. Make sure that if you're helping others, you're doing it because you want to, not because you feel obligated to. And if you feel that the, that, the help that is being asked of you does not resonate with you or what you are trying to do for the, for yourself or to put into the world or just to do period then it's okay to say no that you can't do it um it may not feel good at first um but you'll get over it because you know you'll feel much more empowered and you'll also feel like you know you're being true to yourself and you're, you're sticking to what you feel or what you believe in. So it's okay to say no to people sometimes. But, you know, if you are going to give, give from your heart and give purely because you want to make sure that what you're putting out into the world is really something that's pure and that's based in love, compassion, and based in the grander, more um, sincere parts of you um, as a human being and as a spiritual being, not from a sense of obligation. Okay. Well, I love you guys and I hope that you guys have an amazing new year. Um, I will be back next week for um, my next podcast. So we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions then and, and what what that's all about. Like what, why New Year's resolutions are so popular, why people want to talk about New Year's resolutions or how, how people set up all these goals or all these expectations for themselves and then they end up failing. And so I'll give you a few tips on what you can do to you know get your resolution off to the right start and hopefully be able to achieve or to accomplish that throughout the year. So I love you guys and I look forward to our next podcast together. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.